here at the source of Kenya's secret treasure, camel's milk. A camel produces roughly four liters of milk per day, and it's rapidly becoming the hope of a drought-stricken region. Donkeys carry the milk to collection points, and from there, it's taken by pickup truck to the city. But where does it end up? The city is called Isiolo, a four-hour drive north of the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. They drink camel's milk here because there's not enough food for cows. This area used to experience drought every five years. Now it's every year, a consequence of climate change. The camels were the brainchild of Morgan Saloma of the aid organization SNV. Better camel husbandry could mean less hunger for the people. He's already convinced these milk wholesalers. It's good. They agree that hygiene has improved. Adan has begun using a cloth to filter the wood charcoal out of the milk. It's an improvement on a traditional method of pasteurizing and preserving the milk. His efforts have paid off. I think a liter was 20 shillings when we started here. Yeah. At the moment, we are, we are selling a liter at, uh, at uh, 80 shillings. The milk is popular, especially in Nairobi. The price has gone up because of high demand. One day later, this bus is headed to Nairobi. Unfiltered camel's milk isn't allowed on board. Enforcing that rule is this woman's job. She's from the Anoli Women, a cooperative founded three years ago by the wives of camel owners. Their husbands are sometimes a bit sloppy with their milking. The women's goal is ensuring hygiene from the source to the buyer. It's a strategy that has expanded the customer base. And in Nairobi, their reputation for high standards is well known. In this way, the women of the Camel Milk Cooperative are also earning more. The group has grown to 60 members, and they're saving up for a truck and a shared dairy. But there are new worries. Business is good, but for two years our neighborhood has been unsafe. People from other places are robbing our grazing grounds, killing our herdsmen and stealing our camels. Climate change brought drought and with it tribal feuds over grazing land. The herders in Isiolo will only drive out to their camels with armed protection. 60 kilometers out, it's not safe. Even we can't go here without a security detail. Shepherds, many of them still children, wander about with their herds. Their lives as herders seem predestined. They don't attend school. Mohamud is one example. He began shepherding when he was 10 years old. Now he's 45. His camel's milk goes to Nairobi, but he doesn't want to follow it. I don't know anything about city life. How am I supposed to survive there? Out here I have everything. I'm used to nature, and there's always something to eat. The camels are one way to overcome the drought. But whoever doesn't have camels needs food for the cows, virtually impossible without farming. In Andaniro, far off the beaten track, farming was an unknown word until quite recently. The Samburus believe that God provides food for cows. It either grows or it doesn't. Now these children are learning that food can be planted. Hunger is preventable. Their mothers show them how. They learned from Dutch aid workers who taught them to plant fast-growing grass. Today, they're harvesting for the first time in their lives. This project makes us hopeful. During a drought, we usually can't do anything. But now we can grow our own food, feed our cattle, earn something, and send our kids to school. Whoever plants will harvest. That's the logic behind the project. And it's promoting peace in northern Kenya. 
Camels are a promising sign of what the future may hold. But back to the present. A German dairy with German hygiene. Dairy director Holger Marbach was a development worker for 15 years. Saloma Morgan admires Marbach, who is already supplying milk to major supermarkets. Isiolo still has a ways to go before it will be producing camel's milk that's up to European drinking standards. But you can do a lot more with camel's milk than just drink it. This week, Friday, We've just started delivering a new product. We're bringing our Malaika healing cream into supermarkets. We could use your camel milk for that, and your people could sell a lot more. The medicinal properties of camel's milk make it especially valuable. The women of the camel milk cooperative will be pleased at a chance for new profits. We can produce everything. Eastly, Nairobi. The bus with the camel milk has arrived at the Somali slum, nicknamed Little Mogadishu. This is where the trail goes cold on the hunt for camel's milk. Even aid organizations have little idea where it ends up. It's sold in the blink of an eye. It seems the road to a hygienic product, suitable for export, will be a long and bumpy one.